All right, so Misfits 13. This is one of the cards that will probably live in influencer boxing infamy. It just went down. A lot of things that can be fixed. But overall, a completely chaotic and discombobulated night of influencer boxing. One that needs big time change. What do I mean? What just happened? The breakdown. Let's go. All right, so like I said, Misfits 13. Unlucky number 13, you could call because it. Because that was one of the things that's involved with this card. But there's also some others. Uh, the fight card started with Vitaly and Modine. There is a potential issue already in that fight because about halfway through, the, I think the second round or something, Vitaly wins. I wasn't watching super closely because there wasn't much to watch. It was not really a fight. Modine didn't throw a punch, but... Vitaly won and afterward was on stream, on his own stream, essentially saying that he was refusing to do a drug test. This is not me lying. This is the actual truth. Take a look. About this whole thing. And what if I say no to the test? Not like I'm scared, but what if? I'm already disqualified? The commission makes the decision. But it's not a professional box, yeah. boxing match. What kind of commission? They, they, they just want right. misfits once their views they're just trying to fucking expose me here but i'm telling my viewers in my last i say it in every stream i prescribe testosterone baby 150 cc a week but you're not gonna find drugs you should test me for drugs uh, maybe you photoshop it to put my fucking comeback down and that's kind of where this thing fell off the wagon a bit because you have a fighter openly saying they're just refusing to be tested and that would indicate that they refuse to be tested before the fight. And I know you can't test everyone, but a guy that's openly admitting to doing testosterone and probably some other stuff in the past would probably be the one guy you want to test for PEDs in a boxing match. Anyway, the next fight on the night had probably the fight of the night, which was Alexia Grace and Nikki Haru, or Nikki Ru is what I think is, is how you pronounce her name. Nikki, I'm sorry if I mispronounce it. I'm not saying, I'm just saying, you got a fan in me. Because she came out, and both girls did, by the way, swinging hammers. I am talking the most entertaining, not necessarily the most technical, but most entertaining fight on the night. And you want to know why that is? Because both girls wanted to be in there, and they were looking to win. There were actual stakes. They took pride in themselves, and the fight, and the promotion, and the event. They wanted to be there. And Nikki was landing big time shots off her back foot. Boom, boom. Right hand down the pipe. No body shots, but that's okay. Because listen, that takes time and experience and she doesn't have a lot of that yet, but she gets the win. Alexia Grace, very upset. I understand that. It was a close fight. But still, a fun fight nonetheless, and one that you can move forward saying, you know what? That was a great start to the card. Let's kick this thing off right. And just after that, you have Joey Knight, who came in Misfits Lightweight Tournament. This should have been the main event, or at least the co-main in the next fight that we didn't get should have been the main event. We're going to talk about all that in a second, but Joey Knight and baby hole one of the preliminary fights for the misfits lightweight tournament fun fight but i had a feeling we all knew where this was going to go which was joey knight by domination that's exactly what it was beautiful boxing from joey he is slick he is talented he has more charisma than most guys that you don't see come up as an influencer before they start boxing he has something special you need to focus on joey knight if you're misfits i'll say it again in case they're listening Focus on Joey Knight, potential star. Then we come to the issue with the card, and that was the unfortunate and scary bomb threat. I just want you guys to realize how insane the words that I just said out of my mouth are. Misfits had a bomb threat on the venue. Not only that, they had to evacuate people from the venue. Not only that, they had to evacuate fighters, everyone from the venue. While there was a fight going on, Yuddy Gang and Lil Cray Cray are in the ring. Round one and two done, and I'm starting to see people file out from the venue, and I'm thinking to myself, what, what is happening? Why are people in droves leaving the event while the fight's happening? And then all of a sudden, it isn't just the crowd. It isn't just the fans. It's the equipment people. It is the commentators. It is the fighters all being escorted out of the venue, and we're all sitting here in disbelief wondering what the fuck just happened. Sure enough, we find out there was a bomb scare. Rumors are out there on the who caused it. Right now, there is no definitive answer, at least not publicly, so I don't want to say it was this person or that person. Genuinely, I have no idea, but regardless, it's fucked up to do, and it's a scumbag move. You're a punk if you're swatting anyone, not just an event like Misfits, which 
gets a lot of attention because it is a massive event and there's multiple people involved. Thank God everyone was safe. But doing shit like this is scumbaggery and you're a punk if you do it. I don't care who you are. Jail time is the only answer for that kind of stuff. So they end up not continuing the Yuddy and Cray Cray fight, which I think was the best idea because doing that after waiting that long and trying to come back in the middle of like going into a third round after sitting off for an hour between the round two and three, it, it was not a good idea. Right decision made there from Misfits. Don't do it. But then you get the Taylor Holder and DWG Earth fight. And this was an interesting fight because you had Taylor Holder coming back from a long layoff, didn't really know what he was going to present, doing it on five days or three days notice. And we'll get a reason for that later. But the main point was, okay, let's get this dress rehearsal essentially out of the way for Taylor Holder so that him and Bryce Hall can fight. That was the entire, at least talk of the community, right? Something I want to see. Those two former friends, now rivals, big names. You see where I'm going with this. But that wasn't the way this went down. Fair play to DWG of Earth. The man is a telepath. He is spiritual, lyrical, miracle. But he got in there and he fought. In his first fight ever, he had a good jab. He was sticking it on Taylor. He he came for it. He, he looked like he wanted to be in there and he trained a little bit. And for Taylor, listen, again, you, you can talk about the, the ring rust of being off for however many years now. You can talk about him not being in camp and not training for this fight at all. And those are massive, massive factors that I think absolutely affected his performance. But, you know, you did see some things that Taylor can still work on, things that he still struggles with now that he struggled with in the give fight, being on the center line, his chin being up in the air, not moving off that center line when he throws punch, sometimes crowding himself as he moves forward so that when he does want to throw that right hand, it's a little too close for comfort and he ends up swinging over the top and again, the counter shots down the middle giving him some problems. But ultimately, he started to find a home with his combinations and got the job done. Big time stoppage, got on the ropes and his whole team is calling out Bryce Hall, who's sitting ringside. That is the fight to make. And we're going to talk about it in a second. There needs to be a big switch of direction for Misfits. One of the big ways you can do that is going all the way back to what Misfits and Influencer Boxing want to find, where it started, what the original plan and plot of the scene was. Real ingrained beef between two big names. Taylor Holder Bryce Hall fits that mold perfectly chase that feel. And then we had uh, Jake Boswick and Chris Avila. And this is again, one of the things that is unfortunate for Misfits, but is not a great look because you had Chris Avila, Jake Boswick, fun fight. Chris Avila wins. Pretty, pretty dominant win for Chris Avila. Um, after watching it back a second time, it looked pretty, pretty smooth win for him. But fun fight, two good professionals. And then Chris Avila, you guys know he's from Nate Diaz camp, 209, Nick Diaz army. He's going to speak his mind. And obviously he felt a little upset by one, the fact that there was a bomb threat and he had to sit around and, and wait before his fight. And two, I think because the fight was ruled a split decision and not a unanimous, he was pissed. Got on the mic and essentially, well, he said this. Uh, definitely. Um, I don't know about misfits, so no, no disrespect, but this is a goof, goofy ass show, man. There's a lot of stupid shit going on, but uh, that right there is a terrible. The fighter that just won in your promotion turns the gun on the promoter and says, "Fuck you guys." And this is a goof show, or y'all are a bunch of goofballs. That cannot happen. And the reason something like that does happen, and what happens in the main event is gonna be telling. That again, we'll talk about. But misfits allowing guys like that whether they're good fighters or not, to walk all over their promotion and disrespect them is not the look you want to have. You can't have these fighters disrespecting the promotion. You just can't. I know Mams Taylor's a nice guy and he wants to make relationships work and loyalty is, is great and all that, but some of these fighters don't respect them. They don't take them seriously. So that's when you get moments like that from Chris Avila that he's like, eh, fuck all this. Fuck this goof show and misfits and all. It's not a great look. It buries the promotion and it buries the event. And well, speaking of burying the event, uh, oh my God, the main event was an absolute train wreck. And I said this from the beginning, so I don't want people to think that I'm out here just talking shit. This was a gimmick main event, two on one outnumbered match that you had Fox being the most recognizable and him not being a massive name in influencer boxing and two other names that were relatively small names and not recognizable by most people in influencer boxing boxing in your main event that was in my mind strike number one for not creating a buzzworthy into your card the reason people are there to see the last fight of the night number two i've told you guys this for a year now that gimmicks at some point will run you into the ground especially when you include them in your main event it is dangerous to do to have people focus on the gimmick, the type of match versus the people in it, right? The people come to the venue, they come to your shows, they support your shows, not because you have 25 different gimmicks. And, 
again, that's fine to have in some cases, but when it's expected, it doesn't deliver. It makes that thing less exciting the next time and the next time and the next time. So I've always been on the, the idea that instead of promoting the type of match and getting people familiar with that, you use that time to build names, to put names in that spot. And I know that's not easy, but that is the way forward. This is why I said gimmicks shouldn't be in your main event. Make it about the fighters, put the attention on them, not the match type. This is why I said earlier in the video that Joey Knight or Yuddy Gang and Lil Cray Cray in that main or co-main spot would have been perfect for this card. It would not have hurt business in any way, I can guarantee you that. And it would have given you at least something to look forward to because you're building for the tournament. You're building to see who's gonna be crowned winner. You make them a main event now, they will feel like main eventers when they're crowned as champion. But instead, we get the two-on-one main event that quickly became a one-on-one -on -one main event about one minute, two minutes before the main event was about to start. And that's because one person in the most evil tag team uh, most wanted unfortunately got stage fright. and completely froze up yeah, i just couldn't walk i couldn't move couldn't breathe i couldn't do nothing was it just the nerves the nerves getting to you yes yes and where were those nerves when you fought joey knight i didn't have none of them at yeah. all what i'm not going to do is dogpile this clearly had some anxiety about fighting. And I can't attest to what he was feeling in that moment. It's unfortunate. It's sad. I feel bad for him. And, and of course, you could maybe point to the bomb threat being a part of that and, and whatever else. But you're there to do a job. And you've been given this opportunity. He even says in that video that it was $10,000 to fight on this card. You've been entrusted in the main event. That means there's a lot riding on your shoulders, but you're also expected to deliver. And that is, again, a massive, massive, in my opinion, misstep by misfits not because it's most wanted but because in this influencer boxing scene we have to start thinking about who we're putting on this cards and who we're putting in positions of really big trust and to be able to deliver in those moments that's just the nature of the beast stars deliver people that have experience in those moments that's why you put them there and sure people grow to that point but in their second fight in a main event Ever? It was never a good idea, and I'm sorry you can put the unlucky 13 and the bomb threat and all that, but this was Misfit's fault, 100%. You don't do this as a main event fight, and you have to hold their feet to the fire on that. That's just unfortunate things happened in this card, yes, but things that could have been different and things that should have been different were absolutely this main event. Because not only does Most Wanted not walk out, you have Evil Hero who does walk out, and they start the fight, Evil Hero versus Fox the G. Fox, who, by the way, has been training his ass off, been committed, been taking this seriously. Again, all the markers that check what you want to have on your card, a fighter that's going to be there, take his job seriously, train hard. Obviously, the promotion stuff needs to be there, but does all the things he needs to do just to get in that ring in about a minute and a half in. Evil Hero takes a knee and claims he's been hit in the back of the head. They stop the fight, and there is just this deflation of oh what are we doing here that's the end of the event. influencer boxing took a massive hit tonight and i don't know how big that will look or how big it will affect things going forward but there needs to be change absolutely if anything tonight taught you things about influencer boxing it is that we need to go back to basics otherwise this gimmick forward let's reach for whatever kind of match type we can ideas in the main event is going to run it into the ground it will and i understand you don't have all the biggest names all the time and you have to improvise and do things and i'm not wanting to do that i don't envy mams taylor being the the matchmaker ceo i don't envy that because i couldn't do it. i'm not gonna sit here and say that i could or want to i don't but there was just a clear difference here tonight with this misfits event from any other one before that this was the worst one because it felt like no one cared two of your main event fighters one had an anxiety attack but still couldn't make it into the ring the other didn't care to actually show up and fight Modine didn't throw one single punch in his entire time he was in there vitaly didn't care enough to even stay clean for the card and apparently refused to be tested for drugs after it a mandatory vada test chris avila obviously didn't care about what was going on there he just said fuck misfits and this is a goof show a level of respect has not either been earned or been shown to misfits and that has to change these fighters don't take the promotion seriously and i don't know why that is maybe it's the promotion not taking itself then seriously enough i don't know something has to change there and also something about the way you make fights and who you're given these opportunities two on these cards has to change you can't have people 
with one fight, no, and I mean no social media following, no reason to be in a main event, to be in your main event. This is not a shot at anybody personally and definitely not at most, but can't rely on someone that doesn't have the ability to be in those moments and perform. It's just the truth. You can't do That's it. That's why these people that have followings and have been in big moments and have been in front of a lot of people and have been on a big stage before are a little bit more trustworthy in those moments because they understand pressure and how to deal with it. And this shouldn't even have to be said, but the business reasons for doing something like that make no sense either because no one was watching this card for the gimmick match in the main event. You were watching for Vitaly because he's got a big name or Fox because you wanted to see him and he's got a bigger name than he had before and showed he can knock someone out on Misfits. Or you wanted to see the lightweight tournament. Or maybe some BKFC people and, and MMA fans wanted to see, you know, a product of Nick Diaz's army and Jake Boswick on the card. The biggest names, the biggest reasons you tuned into this card, none of them were your main event. That's a problem. So yeah, I mean, that's really it, man. This was, a, like I said, it was a disappointment. It was a it was a rough night for, for influencer boxing. And as far as where they go next, things have to change. Mams Taylor's acknowledged that. He says, we're going to make this 10 times bigger now. We have to. It's it's it, Something's got to change. KSI in a now deleted tweet tweeted at Aiden and was like, thanks for the fire. I needed that. Like, even the promoters themselves, you can tell they knew this one fell flat. Things have to change. What will that be? I don't have those answers. Quite frankly, dealing with that is not something I want. So, more power to them. But this is where rubber meets the road. Misfits has proven the track record is there. They can put on entertaining events, but it's time for a change. What do they do next? I guess we'll find out.